الله يبارك فيك طيب إن إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Welcome everyone to another weekly lecture inshallah and today we're going to talk about something very very important which is love and hate in Islam no doubt that our feelings uh, are something very very powerful it is a very powerful tool when we say love when we say hate you know it can it can change a person's life people can love uh, with love uh, it brings them happiness and with love it even brings them sadness maybe even death and it drives you to do many things it drives you to do many things i'll give you an example so if somebody says i love money and we all love money and that's not haram but with that love what what does it drive you to do to go to work and to learn to get a job and eventually you become rich so the driver to things is love and also the driver to things is hate if you hate something you stay away from and if you love something you get closer to or you try to collect and in islam allah azza wa jal uh, focused on that and he mentioned it allah azza wa jal mentioned love and he mentioned hate allah qal qul in kuntum tuhibbun allah fattabi'uni yuhibbukum allah wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum wallahu ghafurun rahim say o muhammad in kuntum tuhibbun Allah if you love Allah then follow me yani we have to follow who Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then Allah will love you and he will forgive you and Allah is all forgiving all merciful and so in one hadith the prophet alayhi salatu wa salam he said fa walladhi nafsi bi yadi la yu'minu ahadukum حتى أكون أحب إليه من والده وولده. By Allah, by the one who holds my soul, you swore by Allah, one will not be a complete believer unless he loves me, which is the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, more than his father and more than his children. This kind of love, we have to understand something. love is not one thing love can be different types of love and different types of levels so i'll give you an example we have something called natural love or we call it habitual love uh, do we love life the answer is yes we love to live and survive we don't like death this is natural even human humans animals they try to survive because they love life we say we love the food when we eat we love food we love uh, like i said money we love all these things we love our children we love our mothers we love our wives our husbands um all these things we love we love our jobs maybe some of us some don't love our jobs but we love the money so these things that we love we call it habitual natural love this is because of worldly things because of necessity we have we love these things then comes religious love religious love is different Re- religious love is what you have to build on you have to build on the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam before anything we have to love him religiously we have to love him religiously meaning that our love is connected to the prophet sallallahu alaihi because of islam because he is the messenger of allah and he is the one that re- revealed and brought this religion to us and that's why allah azza wa jalla qala in kuntum tuhibbun allah fattabi'uni mutaba'at ar-rasul you have to follow the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the prophet here said you will not have complete iman unless you love me in another hadith the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam told that to umar umar radiyallahu anhu the second khalifa he said that you have to love me more than anything in the world what did umar say because of his he didn't understand he said oh, ya rasul allah i love you more than anything except myself 
Umar is talking out of nature, nature, fitra. He doesn't know. He thought the Prophet said means love, natural love. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la ya Umar. He said, no, oh Umar, you have to love me more than yourself. Then Umar said, now, ya Rasulullah, I love you more than myself. So he fixed that. And that is the religious love. That is the religious love. And no doubt, the religious love is connected to the natural love. If we believe that the Prophet وسلم, is our Prophet, and he is the one that is going to do shafa'a for us in the day of judgment, and he is the one that is one of the, the reasons, the main reasons that we are going from the hellfire to, to the Jannah, no doubt, and we know about his manners and his well-being and how he taught us and how all these things, you will also naturally love him. You will also naturally love him. Disliking the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is kufr. Takes you out of the folds of Islam. Hating the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is kufr. Takes you out of the folds of Islam. And this is something that, of course, no Muslim, no mu'min does that. We love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with our hearts and with our religion and with our belief. And that's why we follow him. Now comes the religious love on other things. Taban, the love of the Prophet والسلام, is connected to the love of Allah, right? We love Allah. No doubt the engine of us worshiping Allah is the love, is the love. And then followed by that, like I said, we love uh, uh, the Prophet وسلم, that's not it. We also love the Sahaba, as we mentioned previously in the previous deaths, we love them religiously. And we also love acts of worship. We also love acts of worship. Why? Anything that Allah Azza wa Jal loves, we love. Does Allah love prayer, salah? We say yes. Does Allah love us to fast? We say yes. Does Allah love you to give zakah? We say yes. Does Allah want you to wear the hijab, or woman? Yes, so we love that. Now comes a pro an issue. In my heart, as a human being, can love and hate be combined? Yes. We humans are a complex mixture of love and hate and feelings and sadness and anger and everything else. So love and hate can be together in one heart. Tayyib Su'ad, question. Can love and hate be combined towards one thing? The answer is yes. And I know, I think you know this. For example, somebody has a child. This child, we love him because he's, he's our, for example, a man loves his children, no doubt about it. But if that child is a troublemaker, he's bad in school, would you hate that? The answer is yes. I would hate that in him, but I would, but I would also love him. So love and hate can be combined together. Allah Azza wa Jal fil Qur'an قال كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ القتال. It is obligated on you or Allah has ordered you to fight in, in, in a situation where Allah ordered the Muslimin to do jihad. كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ القتال. Then what did he say? He said وَهُوَ كُرْهٌ لَكُمْ And you don't like it. Ah, oh, we don't like jihad? Yes. We don't like it naturally. Meaning that I might get killed, I will be away from my family, I might lose a leg, I might lose an arm, I might all the and you know fear of of harm and damage and hurtfulness. So it's kur and Allah Azza wa said, wa huwa kurhun lakum. Then Allah Azza wa Jalla said, wa asa an takrahu shay'an, wa huwa khayrun lakum, wa asa an tuhibu shay'an, wa huwa sharrun lakum. Allahu yalamu antum la taalamun. Maybe you, Allah in this ayah is saying, maybe you hate something and it is good for you, and maybe you like something and it is bad for you. Tayyib Jihad, do we hate or love? We love and hate. We love from a religious perspective. Sahih? Because Allah loves jihad. Allah loves the people who fight in his in his sake as a as a, a line or an order. So we love jihad religiously. But if we not hate it or dislike it in another way, naturally, because we are naturally humans. We don't like harm on ourselves. 
So it is combined. Same thing with Salat al-Fajr. Brothers, don't we love uh, sleeping? We love sleeping. If somebody wakes you up in the middle of the night, won't you hate that? Yes, we hate it. So we hate that part, but we love Salat al-Fajr. So there is hardships in Salat al-Fajr, or maybe we dislike waking up and going to the Salah, but we love it religiously. So is Siyam, so is Hijab. There are hardships in these things, and we dislike hardship, but we love it religiously. Now comes when, it, when, when we talk about things that are things that are habitual, like I said, normal, natural things. Even these things, brothers and sisters, you can make them something that is rewarding and hasanat and good deeds for you. Yani, for example, you love sleeping? You said, yes, I love sleeping. Tayyib. How about if somebody wants to sleep and they will sleep for the sake of Allah? And he loves sleeping because sleeping will make him stronger and sleeping early will make him stronger so he wakes up to Fajr. That sleeping, what happens to it? Now it changed. It became a religious sleeping. Now you are rewarded when you're sleeping. Why? The Prophet said, Deeds are but by intentions. And your intention is that you want to please Allah. So that act will become, will become uh, rewarding. Another example, another type. If somebody says, I like perfume, I like tib, tib. Then he read in a hadith, this is natural, he just by himself, this is a personal thing, he likes tib. Then he read a hadith that says the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to love tib, used to love perfume. Now he said, ah, mashallah, so I love tib because I love it, because of my personal preference, and I also love tib because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam loves it. What happened here now? Now when you put tib and you love tib, that is rewarding for you because you're following the Prophet and you love it religiously now. Or for example, siwak. Siwak, some of the ulama said brushing your teeth is part of siwak. Brushing your teeth is part of siwak that the Prophet وسلم, told us and recommended us to do. Now, if somebody brushes their teeth and he says, I want to clean my mouth and my teeth because I'm following the Prophet وسلم, what happens here? Your love of this thing becomes an act of worship, becomes an act of worship. Now, when it comes to the love of Allah and the love of the Prophet and the love of act, acts and good deeds in Islam, you cannot put anything on top of it. Allah Azza wa Jal قال, قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاءُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاءُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَعَشِيرَتُكُمْ وَأَمْوَالٌ اقْتَرَفْتُمُوهَا وَتِجَارَةً تَجَارَةً تَخْشَوْنَ كَسَادَهَا وَمَسَاكِنَ تَرْضَوْنَهَا أَحَبُّ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولُهُ وَرَسُولِهِ وَجِهَادٍ فِي سَبِيلِهِ فَتَرَبَّصُوا حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِهِ Allah in this ayah says, if you love your family, and your fathers, and your children, and your homes, and your tijara, and your, your, your business, and your money, more than Allah and the Prophet, then Allah will punish you. Here again, I remind you, this is not the natural love, but this is the religious love, or the love that makes it on top of Allah wa Rasul. No doubt in Islam, we cannot do that. Allah Azza wa Jal, like I told you before, laysa kamithlihi shay, sah? Allah, there is nothing like him. So your love to Allah must be nothing like it. Your love to Allah must be nothing like it. What kind of love am I talking about here? This is a love of humility and submission and a love from a, a slave abd to Allah, to his master. This, you cannot top it. No, nothing tops this. Nothing top it. No ruler, no alim, no child. No money, nothing. And that is why Allah Azza wa has warned us. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warned us that your heart should not be attached to things too much because then maybe it becomes your God. Have you seen the person who has, come, who has taken his desires as his God? 
Why is that? Because of love, because of exaggerated love. Haven't we heard, brothers and sisters, some people, wallahi, wallahi, they do sujood for another woman because they love her so much. Or they do sujood for even uh, uh, like a ruler. Or they do sujood for money. Or, or they do sujood for even a football team. Football team, ya akhwa. This is a fitna. So a Muslim should not drive his heart to these things. And always remember that these are perishable things. No doubt. They will last. They will, they will always have an end and a limit. Just like you have a limit and you will die. So your love to it has, must be limited. Must There is always a roof, a ceiling to this love. And always connect your heart to Allah Azza wa Jal and to the Prophet and to acts of worship and good deeds. Now comes hate. Do we hate things that Allah hates? The answer is yes. Yani can some Muslim say, I love kufr? No, you cannot say that. If you love kufr, can you be a Muslim? No. Allah Azza wa Jal قال, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْكَافِرِينَ والله لا يحب الظالمين والله لا يحب المعتدين والله لا يحب الفاسقين الله doesn't like fisk which is sinful things things that are immodest Allah doesn't like liars Allah doesn't like oppressors Allah doesn't like transgressors Allah doesn't like ظلم and Allah doesn't like kufr like if someone would say oh yeah okay I don't like the act but I love the person that doesn't make sense brothers and sisters if you don't like the act, you shouldn't like the person who's doing the act. Tayyip Faris, we have some colleagues and maybe some family members who are not Muslimin. I have to hate him? What did I say? I say love and hate can be combined in one heart. Allah Azza wa Jal, when he was talking about parents who are non-Muslims, Mada qala Allah? وَإِنْ جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَنْ تُشْرِكَ بِي مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٌ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا If your parents are disbelievers and they tell you to do kufr, فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا Don't obey them. Then what did he say? وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا But be friends with them in this dunya and be beautiful towards them. They are your parents. What does that mean? That means your natural love as a child to your parents must be there. And you have to establish it. You have to be nice to them. And you love them as a mother and father. But you hate the kufr in them. Just like you guys now in, in Tokyo, in Japan. You have people who are not Muslim. What is our feelings towards them? The feeling is that you hate them religiously. Religiously. But maybe they're nice people. They're good people. They're helping me. They're cooperating with me at work. They're you know sitting with me in dinner, in social aspects. So what is that? Should I, should I hate that? No. That you like and love. That's fine. But don't make that love extend to religious love. Be careful. Always have that barrier that you hate the kufr and you hate the kafirin religiously. But, and this is something very important, we have to differentiate between ihsan and hate and love. In your heart, you hate kufr and you hate the kuffar. Does that mean I cannot be muhsin good to kuffar? Answer is no, you have to be muhsin to kuffar. As a matter of fact, many of the sahaba and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wasn't he a muhsin to the kuffar, to his uncle, to his neighbor who was a Jew, to um, uh, one of the sahaba, uh, Safiya bint Umay, she had a Jew cousin. She wrote inheritance for him. Of course, inheritance doesn't happen. You cannot. Uh, by default, you cannot inherit a non-Muslim. But if you have a wasiyah, wasiyah means uh, a will, then it's different. You can have a small amount, or I think a thuluth, third of your wasiyah can be for a will. So she wrote a wasiyah, a will, for her non-Muslim cousin, relative. So this is called ihsan, and this is different than your religious hate towards them. This is different than your religious hate towards them. Allah Ta'ala A'lam, let's stop here if you have guys have any questions. This is, there's a continuation, inshallah, next week we will talk about the wala wa bara, association and disassociation because that's connected with love and hate in Islam.
نقف هنا we'll conclude here if you guys have any questions or any doubts or any comments please let me know جزاك الله خير شيخ I am also yes I am also thankful to you ah. for your concerns and also your uh, including your duas for my father in law and his family is uh, is improving and uh, is uh, better and better and uh, yes, uh, thank you very much for your God dua. bless you Welcome Welcome we, we have missed you, you. Yes, thank you I, am, I was very busy in travel that's why I could not join from India Uh, so for that yeah. Allah yes. uh, yes, the religious love for prophet right it should be more So, what are the simple ways, like you you mentioned, like some of the activities, what prophet do we have to do that increases our love? What are the basic some of the things, right? We can tell. God bless you. See, the first thing you need to understand in order to love something, you have to know it. Uh, you cannot love something without knowledge. That's why we say, if you know more, if you know Allah more, you will love Allah more. Same thing with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And this is something that subhanAllah today, nowadays, we have missed. Wallahi, wallahi, brothers, me personally, this is on a personal level. When I read in the seerah, in the biography of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I love him more. When I read about him, how he used to treat, you know, his friends, his family, what he used to do, you will gain more love towards him. That's number one. So knowing about the Prophet is something that will make you love him more. Number two, reading about the sunnah what is the sunnah see uh, how do you express love in the correct way express love in the correct way by following the sunnah the more you follow the sunnah the more you will love him because it's a religious love and religious love is connected to your iman your heart and the more you do it the more your iman will increase so doing anything be very wary on what did the Prophet ﷺ do in many situations in life. Research about it, understand it, and then apply it. This, inshallah, will make you love the Prophet ﷺ more. And like I said, reading or listening to the seerah of the Prophet is extremely, extremely important. Nowadays, today, wallahi, today's, yani, many Muslims, they don't, they don't understand this or they neglect uh, reading about the life of the Prophet. Wallahu alam. Jazakallahir. And also, I want to mention we have a weekly uh, Sira program here uh, every oh, Saturday beautiful. after Fajr, and we have brothers join for that, and we follow the video series, and it looks going well, and more and more people are joining. That's beautiful. And from participants from online, any sisters, do you have any questions? Sisters or anybody who is online. I guess no questions. Yeah. I think you're okay. You're fine. Yeah. Jazakumullah khair for your time and also oh, yeah. giving yeah. lecture. Yeah. yeah. Next next uh, next session will be a bit uh yani, a bit heavy or maybe uh, has more details. It will be a follow-up, like I said, wala wa bara, and we'll talk about it, inshallah next week. Inshallah, inshallah. Thank you very much for your consistent uh, support for us and <laughs> continuously. And in your busy schedule, you are join, you are giving lecture for us, inshallah. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.